morning children myself ashwini i am teaching your favorite subject social studies children how are you hope everyone is doing good that's nice children everyone brought the books very good but still some of the students did not buy the books from the school so please collect the books as early as possible okay let us start a new chapter called from gathering food to growing food what is meant by word gathering gathering means collecting things right what is meant by gathering gathering is nothing but collecting things from different places our earliest people they don't know how to grow the plants they don't know how to cultivate and how they don't even know how to make the food okay how our man or human beings evolved from gathering food to growing food in this chapter let us know more about this okay first of all let us go to the history back a million years ago how our ancestors will look how they look they are not look like us now right they look like chimpanzees everyone said that they look like chimpanzees how they evolved from chimpanzees to a well civilized person human beings are one of the best creature in the planet earth do you agree with me yes human beings are one of the best creature in this planet earth how do we, how we are evolved from from a stage of chimpanzee to a civilized person it took 1 or 2 3 years no it took a lot of thousands of years to evolve from a chimpanzee to the homo sapiens or well civilized persons right children okay in this chapter let us know about how our earliest people used to grow the plants what they eat where they stay what they discovered okay let us know in this all these things in this chapter okay before going to this chapter our let us discuss about prehistoric age our early human beings belong to prehistoric age prehistoric age is also called as stone age why it is called as stone age children why because our early human beings use tools which are made up of stone so this age is called as stone age the stone age is also divided into three main phases what are they paleolithic age mesolithic age and neolithic age Paleolithic age is also called as Old Stone Age, where Mesolithic age is called as Middle Stone Age, and finally Neolithic age is called as New Stone Age. Depending upon the tools they are used, these ages are divided. Okay, depends upon the tool making, these ages are divided. Okay, let us know more more about prehistoric age in this chapter in detail. Gathering food and hunting, children. Thousands of years ago, people lived by collecting fruits, flowers, honey, wild grains, and edible tubers and roots that grew naturally in the forest. Children, early people used to move from one place to another place. well moving from one place to another place they used to collect the fruits and flowers which are available in that place if they find any wild grains they used to eat they used to eat as their food next they also hunted birds and animals for their food eh even the early people used to hunt animals and some of the birds and eat their 
flesh they did not grow any crop or rear any animals because they don't have that much knowledge about the cultivation they don't they did not grow any crops and plants they they did not know how to domesticate the animals tools the earliest people used tools made up of stones bones and wood children for hunting what we need we need some of the weapons and tools how these weapons are tools are made up of these are made up of bones of dead animals bones of dead animals and wood of a tree these bones and woods by using another sharp stones or bones they used to sharp edges of that bone and edges of the wood and use it for hunting initially large stones were given sharp edges by very chipping them with another stone with the help of another stone they used to sharp the edges of that stone by using it but because of that sharpness they used to hunt animals these tools enabled them to cut flesh dig the earth for tubers and hunting animals with the help of this tool they used to dig the earth for tubers for their food after thousands of years they were able to make small sharp pieces from hard stone children with the help of hard stone they used to make small sharp pieces of stone these pieces of stones are used for hunting these small pieces of stones what are called they are called as microliths children what they are called microliths with the help of these microliths what they will do they uh, these are used for dug, digging soils with the help of these sharp stone they used to dig the soils Ch chop the trees for the bark by using this they, they even used to sharp the trees bark remove the skins of animals by using this they used to remove the skins of animal this skin they are used for clothing and cut meat they used to even cut the meat of that animals and use the bones for another purpose children this picture is about early hand axe it is one type of axe which are used by our early people with the you, you see that the sharp edges of that stone yeah with the help of that sharp edges they used to dig the soil and they used to chop the fruits and roots of that tree this is a hand axe which is excavated in kamakur village in nellore district this hand axe is found in which district in nellore district children let us see some more pictures are you observing that these are the small sharp pieces small sharp pieces are called micro lids i already said small sharp pieces of tools are called micro lids these tools are observed in jharkhand state have you observing this picture this picture these tools are made up of wood these tools are made up of stones stones tools are found at jammu and kashmir state by using these stone tools and wood tools they used to chop the fruits and they used to dig the earth next topic is fire who discovered fire children who discovered fire the discovery of fire by the early people brought great changes in their lives as children did they brought any is the discovery of fire brought any great changes in in their lives and our lives yes they brought great changes in life because discovery of fire is a milestone for the life of all human beings today we used to cook food by using electrical devices but in earlier cooking food was cook cooking food was happened with the help of fire without fire we, the earlier people were unable to cook the food so discovery of fire is one of the milestone for all the human beings 
वंस अगेन आई विल रिपीट हु डिस्कवर द फायर डिस्कवर द फायर वॉज डिस्कवर्ड बाय अर्ली पीपल द अर्ली ह्यूमन्स डिस्कवर फायर वेन दे सॉ ए स्पार्क वेल रबिंग वन पेबल अगेनेस्ट अनदर पेबल बाय रबिंग वन पेबल अगेनेस्ट अनदर पेबल दे डिस्कवर फायर दे इट रोस्ट मीट इन द प्लेस ऑफ रॉ मेट इट वॉज बिगनिंग ऑफ ए कुकड फूड दे यूज टू इट रॉ मेट एलियर बट नाउ दे आर दे यूज टू रोस्ट द मीट विद द हेल्प ऑफ दिस फायर दे यूज they also used fire to keep off animals because they scared the animals to not to come closer to them they also provide light in the caves fire also provide light in the caves look at this picture children the earlier man is rubbing the pebble by this he discovered the fire nomadic life actually they led a mobile life constantly moving from one place to another place children i already said that they used to move from one place to another place for food when moving from one place to another place the people are called as nomads they are living nomadic life the earliest people used to live in small groups i said that they used to live in small groups in the caves they used to stay in the caves or under trees they used to live under trees and lead their life they don't know how to build the houses so they stay under the trees or in caves this picture is about belgum caves i already said this the early people used to live in caves right children these belgum caves are located in karnool district archaeologists have rec- recovered a large number of stone to tools from the caves of karnool district animal bone stone tools specially microliths are found in these caves tools made up of bones are found only in these caves specially bone tools are found in these belgum caves in entire subcontinent bone tools are found in this belgum caves belgum caves are located in karnool district the next topic was paintings the early people draw pictures of animals and hunting scenes on the walls of many caves and rock shelters i already said that children where the early people used to live the early people used to live in caves when they are living in caves and taking shelter in caves they used to draw some of the pictures and some of the hunting scenes on the walls of the caves maybe that is a habit for them by what they used to paint on the walls different color stones were grounded and mixed with animal fat by different color stones they used to ground and mix with an animal fat they used to get some of color by using that color they used to paint on the walls of the caves pictures were then painted on rocks with bamboo brushes by using bamboo brushes they used to picture some of the animals and some of the hunting scenes in the in the walls of the caves perhaps drawing pictures like these we believe and they believe we think so some religious importance for them they think they are these are the some of the religious importance for them children look at this picture we observe some of the animals and a man with an arrow and bow this picture was drawn in drawn on the walls of the caves this picture was found in chindakunta caves in vyasar kadapa district where it is found in vyasar kadapa district children let us observe some of the cave paintings in our andhra pradesh most of our cave paintings are absurd in there are more than 200 cave paintings in vyasar kadapa district there are 10 rock shelters nearer it which have paintings of earlier people there are more than 200 paintings in white and red color there are by you there are two colors of cave paintings what what are the two colors red and white colors 
there are only 10 white color paintings in the red color paintings humped oxen are found in only one cave oxen type of cave paintings are found in only one cave in the remaining pictures we can see the pictures of deer stag fox rabbits birds and human beings etc almost all the caves are present in kadapa district children these are the some of the cave paintings hello and welcome again to an archaeology 101 lecture Today's topic I'll be looking at Homo sapiens origins and their subsequent movement around the globe. The most currently accepted theory and understanding of origins of sapiens, as was theorised perhaps as early as the late 19th century, is that we evolved in Africa, and at some point during the late end of the Upper Paleolithic, sapiens spread to Europe, Asia and then the Americas. When and how they left Africa is still being debated, and I will start with the Out of Africa theory, abbreviated as OOA, as that is the most commonly accepted answer to sapiens origins, which was developed by Chris Stringer in the 1970s. There are two parts to the OOA theory. The first is OOA1, where it is believed our ancestor Homo erectus, sometimes known as Ergaster in reference to the African population, or some other counterpart, moved out of Africa about 1.8 million years ago into Eurasia. There are four mainly debated routes out of Africa. The Sinai Peninsula is the most obvious exit route, and by far the most safe and popular, which involves travelling through Egypt, which is the gateway to Israel and then Asia, via what is known as the Levantine Corridor. This is the most obvious way to transport in and out of Africa, as it is still connected today and there is no water that you have to cross, although it is an incredibly long distance to travel by foot. The second route is the Bab el Mandeb Strait, which is between East Africa and the Arabian Peninsula. Just before the Pliocene, there was a land connection between both land masses. However, during the Pliocene, that connection was reclaimed by the Red Sea, and there's very limited research being conducted on some of the islands, thought to have built up the land bridge, and there is only some slight evidence to suggest that anyone will cross this. But it is a very short gap, and possibly there may have been some method that the ancestors used to cross this land bridge. The third route is the Strait of Gibraltar. Hominin remains in sites such as Sima del Elephants, which we know contained Homo erectus and later Hydrobagensis slash ancestor uh, remains, do provide a slight piece of evidence. The issue is that there is still at least a 10 km gap between Spain and Morocco, even when glaciation is taken into account. So whether actually they did cross and that these fossils are evidence of hominids crossing over into Gibraltar from Africa, or rather that they took a different route and that these hominids just eventually ended up in Gibraltar anyway, but just came via a completely different route. The fourth and final route was the Straits of Sicily, which partitioned Sicily and Tunisia in North Africa. A land bridge is again a hypothesis with some loosely attached Aldo and tool sites in Sicily, but no direct fossil sites have been discovered in the immediate area that would strongly attribute to a migratory exit. It is nonetheless not an implausible theory, and several hundred kilometres away there have been fossil sites found, but just not in the media area. Regardless of which exit strategy Erectus took, it still reached as far as Indonesia, presumably all by land. Boat technology at this point in time is thought to have only been produced by sapiens. Erectus remaining in or perhaps returning to Africa around 700,000 years ago evolved into Hylobagensis, who can also be found in Europe and Africa, who subsequently became Neanderthal in Europe around around 400,000 years ago, and sapiens evolved in Africa perhaps as early as 300,000 years ago. This brings us to the second part of the OOA hypothesis, OOA2. Between 180,000 years ago, sapiens was mobilised to once again move out of Africa, perhaps due to worsening environmental conditions, most likely it was down to a combination of factors. The same exit locations were most likely reused, particularly the Bab el Mandeb Strait and Sinai Peninsula. New dating shows, I think somewhat bizarrely, that Australia was colonised 65,000 years ago and was one of the oldest known non-African sapien colonising events, happening at least a thousand years before Europe was colonised and perhaps a few hundred years ago before most of Asia was colonised. The Americas were subsequently colonised between 10 and 20,000 years ago, after the Asian populations crossed the Beringer Land Bridge, probably somewhere from Siberia. 
It is admitted by Stringer himself that we don't know how many dispersal events there actually were. OOA 1 and 2 are still used today, but to make a broad generalisation about human migration. In reality, there were probably multiple migratory events in and out of Africa. This gives us a basic summary of out of Africa theory. Now onto a more controversial viewpoint, the multi-regional hypothesis. Multi-regional theory, or MRE for short, has lost a lot of popularity since the 1980s. There is a minority that still follow it. Just like OOA, the regional theory says that Erectus evolved in Africa and migrated to Eurasia. Although the populations were separated, they continued to somehow exchange genes, therefore they never spe speciated, but developed the racial, racial features seen today. The Erectus populations then simultaneously evolved in all respective geographic areas, and not merely in Africa, into sapiens. Due to new genetic discoveries such as the mitochondrial Eve, which has shown that we have an African ancestor, um, multi-regional theory has had to have been changed from its original 1980s uh, uh, description and it was changed in 2003 to accommodate more genetic studies. But it is continuing to change as we show that although we did interbreed with uh, archaic homo such as Neanderthal, the DNA is not a large percentage as they are suggesting and therefore we were not changed to such a radical degree because we interbred maybe a couple of times with Neanderthals. There are other models as well rather than just these two, such as the assimilation model which takes both multi-regional and OOA aspects, and it describes morphological changes involving continuous interbreeding with other species, such as the Neanderthal population, and it's seen as key in displaying the morphological and more recently the genetic traits seen today. The OOA theory tended to trivialise genetic admixtures of more archaic homo to our own. This dynamic has no choice but to change slightly, but not too radically, because as I previously discussed we do have some, uh, may I say, more primitive DNA in us, but it is not a massive proportion, and not every single sapiens population has this DNA. Neanderthal DNA does not exist in the African population, for instance, but it does in the European, maybe 1-4% to in some cases. The Out of Africa Theory, or the Recent African Origin Theory, RAO, as it is now being referred to, is probably the strongest contender, and has the suitable evidence to back up the theory, but the the assimilation model has its merits and popularity as well. The multi-regional theory has been changed so much through the years it is almost exactly the same as the assimilation model and is definitely on its way out of mainstream archaeology as more and more genetic data such as Neanderthal DNA percentages in our own begin to disprove it. Neither the OOA or MRE hypothesis have taken into account admixtures of more archaic homo such as Neanderthal or the more recent discovered Denisovians to such an extent as we do know now. Chris Stringer's RAO theory has been able to adapt to this however, whereas MRE has not been able to to such a great degree. I'm under little doubt that the REA theory will continue to change and maybe even be replaced completely, but the fundamentals seem solid. African origin followed by Eurasian and European disposal, evolving and adapting while maybe mixing with archaic species as well, who had previously already dispersed from the cradle of humanity. Thank you everyone for watching. I'm sorry this was quite science heavy and I don't even quite understand a lot of it myself and I will strive to read up on this more so I can really get to grips with some some of these theories, especially the assimilation model, which seems quite interesting to me. But I myself am a strong believer in the recent African origin theory, and if you